All right, good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt, and welcome back to another short war video, and today we have very big news on day 8 of the invasion of mainland Russia by Ukrainian forces. Today we're hearing that Ukraine now controls 74 settlements in the Kursk region of Russia, which is a very big number, and we're also hearing that there are rumors of a flank maneuver being performed on the Belgorod region by the AFU forces as well, and we're also hearing that currently Putin is being presented with options for a mass mobilization of Russian civilians to put on the front lines in Ukraine, and also to sure up the border defenses around mainland Russia. And finally, we're hearing as well that Lukashenko is planning on transferring a lot of military equipment to the Russian military from his active stockpile to try to sure up the Russian defenses. But with that, we're jumping into our first article of the day, which goes to Live Ukraine Map. So right now, we're hearing from the Commander-in-Chief of the Ukraine Armed Forces, Sersky, that he's reporting to President Zelensky that in the last 24 hours, Ukrainian defense forces have advanced one to three kilometers in different directions of the Kursk region, and about 40 square kilometers, and also 74 settlements are now under control of Ukraine in total. And also, just as a quick reminder, we did learn yesterday that Sersky says they control about 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory in total, but this is the current gains as of today. So they are still making significant progress. Even though the Russians have had time now to try to shore up their rear lines, they are still not stopping the advance of the Ukrainians. So it's still going extremely well on day eight of the invasion, which is very good to hear. But with that, we're jumping into our next article here, which goes to Nexta. And right now, we're hearing that Belgrade Belgorod is under attack as we speak, and also the AFU is preparing a flank operation, and it says here in the post that the situation in Kursk has sharply escalated, and Ukraine's armed forces are continuing their offensive, and according to military experts, there are currently plans to expand into the Belgorod region even further, and it says, quote-unquote, to date, the offensive operation of the AFU on the territory of the Kursk region continues, and there's no question of its closing down, and also, moreover, I would not rule out the possibility of its extension to the Belgorod region. And also, there is a very big reason why the Belgorod flank might actually have a lot of hype around it because right now if the AFU can successfully hover over Belgorod, they can create threats and block key supply routes which would put the Russian armed forces in even a worse position than they already are because without the proper logistics the Russian forces don't stand a chance of stopping anything. So that could be the grand plan right here by the Ukrainian forces to get into Belgorod and then cut off the logistics supplies and then they can basically seize the entire area without too much uh, backlash from the Russian forces. And with that we're moving into our next article here, and this one's going to go to OSINT Technical, and also, for the first time, we're seeing footage of the Ukrainian Air Force airstrikes in support of the Kursk Offensive, and we now have an actual video showing the fighter jets themselves, and seen here in the video, which we're about to watch, a Ukrainian fighter jet drops a pair of US-supplied JDAM ERs on Russian positions in Tetkino, conducting an effective tactical strike into Russia. So let's take a look at the video. All right, so taking a look at the video, you can see the first strike by the JDAM ER right there on that building. And moving on here to our next one, we're about to see some more strikes, as this one right here really puts off a lot of smoke. And right there, we see there's more damage from that strike. And also, we're going to see another one here in just a moment. It's going to take the video just a moment to get to that. But right over there, you see another one on the left, and there's another one right here on the right. So the Ukrainians are coming in strong with the air support and dropping these JDAMs in large numbers on the area of Tetkino. So more proof that they do have a lot of air support coming in, but no word on the F-16s being used at the moment. So we can't say that the F-16s are being used in the area, because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about that, and right now we can't confirm or deny that, because we don't have any evidence of it. But it is a possibility. And with that, we're moving into our next article here, and this one is going to go to Nexto once again, and we're getting very disturbing uh, rumors here that a new mobilization in Russia may be announced at the end of 2024, according to Bloomberg and according to Nexta, and says the Russian army lacks any new soldiers to replenish the losses on the front, which have now reached the maximum since the beginning of the full-scale war in Ukraine. And this was reported by Bloomberg, citing three sources close to the Kremlin and the Russian MOD, and according to them, it's not possible to solve the problem of replenishing the army with the help of contract servicemen. So, basically, Usually they're saying here they're running out of manpower and they're losing people so fast they're going to start scraping people off the street. So this is not good. This indicates Russia is having a severe manpower problem. Uh, and I will say though, Russia is not alone with this. Currently Ukraine is having a manpower problem as well. But it looks like Russia is having a much worse one because they're going to, have to do a major mobilization to actually fix this. And moving on to our next post here, we actually get more news about the unconfirmed rumors. And we're seeing here that Vladimir Putin will be presented with multiple proposals for increasing recruitment to the Russian armed forces in the context of the attack in the Kursk region 
Putin and the ongoing offensive in the DPR region, and among the proposals that would be presented to Putin is a new wave of mobilization. However, this is a proposed only as one of the most extreme measures, which will definitely not be adopted in the next two to four months. So allegedly speaking, Putin will be presented with these options today, so we should hear something pretty soon as to whether or not Putin decides to go with this and mobilize a lot more Russian civilians, or whether or not he's going to reject it and take some other action instead. We'll just have to wait and see. But with that, we're jumping into our next article here, which goes to Bloskovka. And in this post right here, we can see that Putin's lapdog Lukashenko has now transferred Russian military equipment from his own active stockpiles and units that are currently active in the Belarusian military. He's actually given away some of his active duty equipment to the Russians, uh, basically because Putin said, give it over or else. And right here it says, with a request to transfer part of the equipment, the Russian Federation turned to Belarus after the successful actions of the armed forces in the Kursk region, as it was faced with an acute shortage of weapons, both in this direction and in the others. So the rumor on the street is, this is an offer that Lukashenko could not refuse, and he had to give up the equipment, uh, or else Putin was going to put the hurt on him. So right now we see Lukashenko once again getting involved in the situation. We just heard some threats from Lukashenko yesterday, basically indirectly threatening Ukraine with invasion, and now we're seeing Lukashenko actively transferring equipment over to the Russian armed forces. So once again, Belarus is sticking its nose into this, and we'll have to see exactly where this goes as well. But with that, we're moving on to our next article here, and this one is going to go to Politico Europe. And we now have official confirmation from Kyiv that President Vladimir Putin has now pulled units out of Ukraine on the front line to put them back to defend mainland Russia. So right now, this idea right here is playing into the idea that Ukraine might have been trying to create a distraction to cause Putin to take troops off the Ukrainian front line, put them back into mainland Russia, which would give Ukraine an advantage on the front line and potentially able to push through even further and take more ground back, which is obviously Ukraine's territory in the first place. So this does like sort of play into that distraction idea, and it looks like it's going pretty successfully because Putin is having to pull a lot of units off the front line to defend Russia, and we're seeing that right here being confirmed by Zelensky himself. So very good to hear. But with that, we're moving into our next article, which goes to Nexta once again. And we can see that in the vicinity of the Kursk nuclear power plant, there are currently explosions happening over the city of Kurchatov since the morning, local Telegram channels report. And we actually have a video showing the explosions in the area. So right now, the fighting in Kurchatov is heating up quite badly. And we're not sure how close the Ukrainian forces are to the Kursk nuclear power plant, but they are in the area. So we're waiting to hear exactly how close they really are. But with that, let's take a look at the video and see what we have. So right here you see... There's a big explosion right there in the middle of Kurchatov. So it's going down right now in that city, and it is getting pretty fierce out here. So that is more proof of an explosion and also major battles happening near the city of Kurchatov. But with that, we're jumping into our next article here, and this one goes to Jason J. Smart. And not only are we hearing of major explosions in Kurchatov, but also in Yekaterinburg, Russia, we're hearing locals reporting loud explosions following a massive fire that's casting smoke across the entire city. And also a reminder here that Yekaterinburg is home to Russia's military central military district. So this is a key place right here in Yekaterinburg for the Russian military complex. And now we're seeing a large fire and we're not really sure what building was hit or which building caught fire, but it is indeed a big one. And I would presume it probably has something to do with Russia's defense industry, but that's sort of taking a good guess at it. And we'll have to wait for more information to come out. But with that, we're jumping into our next article, which goes to Nexta. And we're getting some more interesting news about the situation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. And remember, just a couple of days ago, it actually caught on fire at the cooling tower and right now we're hearing that the IAEA team which is a nuclear watchdog group they found neither tire remains nor drones at the side of the fire at the Zaporizhia NPP and according to experts the fire probably started inside the tower at the level of water nozzles located at a height of about 10 meters rather than at the base of the cooling tower and the exact cause of the fire is still unknown. So this is kind of interesting because the Ukrainians said that the Russians had intentionally started the fire with tire remains and also the Russians said that the Ukrainians had sent in a drone which which caused the fire at the plant. So right now it's looking like the IAEA is saying that both stories are actually not accurate. And it looks like the fire actually started at a height of 10 meters inside the cooling tower. So to me, that sounds like it could be maybe an arson, uh, maybe by the Russians that control the plant themselves. And maybe it wasn't a tire fire after all, but whatever the case is, that was a huge fire yesterday. And I think that cooling tower is pretty much finished, but we haven't gotten any more reports about the condition of the tower. But of course, a fire that size causes significant damage. Uh, but we'll have to wait to hear more. 
war. But with that, we're jumping into our next article, which goes to War Translated once again. And of course, we're still hearing more speculation as to what could be the cause or the reason for Ukraine invading mainland Russia and what the end game actually is. And right now, we hear from an official within Ukraine's government that, quote unquote, Ukraine is not interested in taking the Kursk region and we don't need someone else's land, unlike the Russian Federation. So take this for what you will, but this appears to be maybe misinformation to try to redirect the Russians' attention. But to me, I would say that it looks like the objective is to take territory. So I'm not saying the guy's lying, but it looks unlikely to me that this is actually the official story right here, and it could simply be trying to misdirect the Russians. So take this for what you will, and let me know down in the comments below what you think about these statements. And with that, moving on to our next article here, this one's going to go to the Kyiv Post. And we're hearing that running contrary to grand statements of support from the UK government, the UK has now again denied Ukraine's request to use Storm Shadow missiles on Russian territory. So that is certainly not a popular move right there, and it's coming at a very tumultuous time inside the UK. That is not good. Uh, they should allow the use of these right here. They've allowed the use of them before, but now all of a sudden they're being denied once again. So this is, you know, not very good in my opinion, and the UK should give them permission to use these instead of taking a approach that's sort of weak. Um, but that's just my opinion. Also, let me know down below what you think about that as well. But with that, we're moving into our next article, which goes to Visegrad 24. And we can see that one of Putin's uh, henchmen has performed a big no-no. Uh, Putin has asked the Kursk governor, Alexei Smirnov, for a report from the Kursk region during a press conference, and the governor actually responded, Ukraine has advanced 12 kilometers into our territory along a stretch of 40 kilometers, and apparently he wasn't supposed to say that out loud because Putin then angrily interrupted him and said that it's not for him to reveal such things. That's really not his place. So let's take a look at the video and see Putin try to do damage control while one of his guys tells the truth. So the guy says, the situation in the region is complicated. He said, today 28 settlements are under enemy control. And he goes on to add that the depth of penetration in the Kursk Oblast is 12 kilometers. And he also continues to say that the front line width is 40 kilometers. And then Putin says, listen, the military department will report to you about the depth and the width. And he's speaking very angrily here. And Putin then goes on to add that tell us about the socioeconomic situation and the aid and stop telling us about how bad we're failing. So Putin got very angry there and had to interrupt the guy to tell him, basically shut your mouth and don't say things like that because we're basically revealing how bad we're losing. So uh, very uh, humorous right here that Putin is having to do damage control with his own officials. So that guy might actually fall out of a window soon by accident, but there's really no telling. But with that, we're jumping into our next article, which is actually our last article, which goes to Politico Europe. And also you might recall that North Korea has been sending significant aid to the Russian territory and the Putin regime ever since Putin visited their country and basically sucked up to them and asked for more shells and artillery and uh, plenty of artillery has been sent to Russia by North Korea and Putin has now showed his appreciation. Russia has now sent 447 goats uh, to North Korea after Kim Jong-un sucked up to Vladimir Putin. So he got some goats out of the deal and that's currently all the actual reciprocation we've seen from Putin's regime to the Kim Jong-un regime. This is actually pretty laughable right here. Putin is sending goats back in return as a big thank you, which is really insulting to say the least. So I wonder how the North Koreans are going to take that. I wonder if they're going to get angry or are they going to sit here and sort of ignore it and keep giving shells to Russia. But nonetheless, that is actually our last post of the day. So I hope you found today's video informative. And of course, we'll have a lot more news to cover tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on our nightly war news stream. So be sure to join us then as well. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos. We love to see the good positive feedback on this content. And we love to hear that y'all love these short war videos as well. And also don't forget to check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below for Patreon where you can go over there, sign up for a monthly membership and support the channel that way which is a very big help because we're largely crowdfunded by the viewers and it's you, the viewers, that makes all of this possible. And we appreciate that very much. And with that, we'll see you all tonight on our stream at 10 p.m. Eastern and bye-bye for now.